What's up everyone? Jay Ingersoll here, EDP Studios. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. Today, I am going to help you guys choose the right DAW for you. So what is a DAW? It's a digital audio workstation. And there is a ton of them to choose from. Now, when I first started recording, there was only a handful. I think a Cakewalk and an early version of FL Studio Pro Tools probably as well. But now there is a, a long, long list. I don't even know if I can name them all, but let's try. Let's see. We got FL Studio, of course, Pro Tools, Reaper, Audacity, GarageBand, Logic, Reason, Cakewalk, Cakewalk Sonar, Studio One, and that's probably all I can name just off the top of my head, but the list goes on and on and on. But before we jump into this video, if you like anything out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. Share this video with someone who you think could use this video, and hit me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'm just trying to grow the channel and uh, help as many people as I can. So there are three things that you're going to want to consider when choosing a DAW. First is going to be your budget. You know, what kind of money do you want to spend? What is that? Is it a subscription service? Is it a, a one-time buy? Do you get unlimited updates? These are all things that you're going to have to check out because you don't want to always have to buy a new version every year. Or if it's just a subscription model, because some, some are, or at least get the best features if you're on the subscription model. So, But it is a budget-based thing. The next thing is what I'm going to say is practicality. What are you using it for? You know, um, are you trying to just make beats? Um, because you got like FL Studio and uh, I believe it is uh, like Logic Pro. Um, I believe even Cubase. And I know people make beats and Pro Tools as well. But Or are you just trying to record? So there are DAWs that are leaning towards the more recording side as well that are better for just doing those things. And, um, you know, what kind of investment are you making into that? And also the very last one would be, you know, what is your skill level and what is your dedication to getting better? Because there is a harder learning curve on some of these DAWs. Now, I can't show them all to you. I don't have that ability, but I will show you the few that I use and explain to you why I use them. And maybe that might help you steer you in the right direction on um at least getting some information to dig into it and choose one. You know, this is a question I get a, a lot, especially for people that are just starting to record themselves. So I figured this would be a great topic to go over. So we're going to dive into the few that I use. And the very first one we're going to go over and we'll go over and check out the screen uh, is FL Studio. So the nice thing about FL Studio, not terribly pricey. They do have different options that come with different plugins. I have a pretty high version of it, but I don't have all of the plugins. FL Studio is geared more towards making beats, but it is a great, well-rounded, or I mean, I say making beats, but you can really, really can make anything in this as far as like sonic atmospheres or uh, cinematic scores or anything like that. I mean, this is, FL Studio is very versatile in that way. Now they have more options to record directly into it like ADAW, and a lot of people do that, and there's a lot of amazing things you can do. So using FL Studio not just to make beats and actually record is a great option, especially for the price. So if you want to do arrangement, so this is kind of what it looks like, like a lot of DAWs, and you'll see the other two that I'll use for an example. You can record right in here, and your tracks come up here, and then if you have any of your patterns from the other side, from the beats that you make, they'll show up here, and that's kind of how you arrange your song. Um, so it's great for composers, beat makers, and like I said, you, if you're an artist, you could put beats in there and record in there. I know a lot of people do it, and uh, they have great results. I love just making beats in FL Studio, and I usually record in Pro Tools. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what Pro Tools looks like with FL Studio. There's tons of tutorials out there. I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit more about that for people who are interested in that. All right, so here's what I use personally for recording. I like this one the best. So Pro Tools is an industry standard DAW. There are a lot of great benefits and features to Pro Tools. Some of the digs on it are sometimes you do have to have the subscription service, and sometimes it's pretty buggy. Um, even when I got this program, all the feedback around it and people that have been in major studios understand the headaches of 
Pro Tools sometimes, but it is a great DAW, and this is kind of what it looks like. This is what I use to record, and it's a pretty standard DAW where you just you select your input, basically, your sound card, and then once you have that selected, you can add a track and whatever track it is, whether it be an instrument track or a direct in if you're just recording here, you know, recording on the mic or whatever. That's what I use it for a lot. I'll import my beat into here, and then I can add my effects on these channels. This is kind of what the edit window looks like. And, you know, the thing with Pro Tools, it is a pretty advanced program. Um, the learner's curve is, a, you know, a little steep, especially if you want to try to master it. I'm far from a master, but I can definitely scoot around on it and get everything done in an efficient, timely manner on it. But, uh, yeah, so that just goes back to your skill level and how much you want to dedicate to using it because it, there is a learner's curve, especially if you're used to using other DAWs. And it can be rather expensive. So some downfalls with that. I'm going to show you guys another great option that I think is comparable to Pro Tools that has a killer price point. And for anybody that's a beginner, I think this is the best option that you can come up with. And I always tell people to go this route. There are free DAWs out there like Audacity and I believe like sometimes GarageBand comes free on uh, Apple products if I'm not mistaken and then there's like free apps on your phone too as well like BandLab and different things that you can record directly onto there so there's a lot of different options I actually use Audacity as well um, I'll pull that up real quick kind of show you what this got what this looks like um, the reason why I use it, I don't do heavy recording into it, but it's the same, it's kind of the same thing. You can record directly into it. What I do is I take my audio from these videos and I put it in here and I use this noise reduction feature that they have. Shout out to Kyle from the Obscured State of Mind podcast for showing me that, but it helps cut out some of that background noise. And um, so I use this and that's the practicality of, I need this for a specific thing that it does. So. You can add tracks on here, same kind of way, honestly. I only kind of know the few commands I do on it, but I believe you can just add tracks here and then, um, you know, record on it. And I just, as far as like it being as in depth or being able to mix it, I know there's different effects you can use, but uh, to mix it in a certain way, I'm, I'm sure you could use it to some extent, but being a free version, there's only so much use I believe you could probably get out of it, but it is a very helpful tool, especially for free. Um, but this last one I wanna show you guys, and this is one that I basically started on, I recorded multiple albums on it, it sounds killer, it has a less of a learning curve, I believe. It's a little easier to use. It's a little more streamlined if you're used to using any other kind of DAWs. And this one is Reaper. It has a great price point if you want, if you're just doing it for yourself. If you're, you know, you want to spend, I believe it's like 70 bucks and you get like a lifetime access and I believe you get free updates with it. It's a great program. Comes with a good stock stuff. You can add whatever extra VSTs or you can do MIDI in this as well. So this is just a great program as well. Uh, if you're more on a budget and you're just getting started to learn a DAW, Reaper is great. So this is kind of what this looks like. Real similar to the Pro Tools. You know, you got your records up here. Um, you have your track layout all set up like this. You know, you, here's like what your EQ looks like. These are just stock EQs. Like I said, they, they have some de decent like... Um, uh, stock plugins they have. I don't know why it took me so long to say that. And then you can just kind of record into here. You set up your sound card the same way as you do in any of the other ones to use for your speakers, your headphones, and then you can record right into here. And here's your transport controls. Very, very straightforward to use. Tons of information out there on how to use it. So them are three great, actually four great DAWs that you can kind of see what they look like and you can hear some of the benefits and the negatives for each one of them. Like I said, I can't go over every single DAW because I don't have all the DAWs, but I do use those four and I use them all for different practical reasons. I don't really find a need to have any of the other ones just because those do everything I need to do. Would I like to have some of the other ones? Yeah, but then you're just spending money on more and more things and that's not really the name of the game, you know. 
uh, use what you have and get and master what you have. But there's a lot of options out there. So you can dig into that. Like I said, those points, hopefully that helps you. And with that being said, if you got anything out of this video or any of that helps you, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up that just one second to like my video really helps. Drop me a comment or a question below. Let me know what you think. And uh, with that being said,